<laughs> Come on. Come on. Hi, friends. Hey, guys. It's Elizabeth, Countess of Low Carb, and on this episode, we're going to talk about grass-fed farming versus industrial farming. Coming up next. Hey guys, it's Elizabeth, Countess of Low Carb, and on this episode, we're gonna talk about grass-fed farming versus industrial for farming. Before we dive in though, make sure you smash that like button, click subscribe, and sign up for our free weekly keto meal plan down in the description link below. Now let's dive in. Hi guys, I am here with the amazing Sharon from Skyview Acres. Skyview Acres Farms. All of the information for Skyview Acre Farms is down in the description link below. I would love for you to check out their website about what we're talking about, which is grass-fed farming versus industrial farming or commercial farming and the difference with that. And Sharon, how long have you guys owned your amazing farm for? We've been doing this for about eight years. We started doing a great big CSA last year. Mm -hmm. And then we also sell by the holes and halves. And that's really what we've been doing up until now. Mm -hmm. But now we're really diving into that whole monthly subscription type of yes. model. Yes, which we're going to talk about, folks. What does that mean? But here um, at your farm, what you have cows. Can you tell the animals that you have? <laughs> Cattle, pigs, chickens, laying hens, Cornish hens, and we do turkeys at Thanksgiving. That is come the on, coolest thing that they come when they're called. We have them trained that way. They and I love this farm because it's in uh, northern Shenandoah Valley, which is near, and many of y'all know I live in Shenandoah Valley. And I was so interested in this farm because it's a grass fed, which is of course on the ketogenic diet to me is mm -hmm. the big, big thing of making sure it's grass fed. But B, y'all humanely raise your animals. Right, we're very gentle with them. We look for ways to handle them that are safe for them, mm -hmm. safe for us, mm -hmm. and less, less stress. We don't yes. want them to be stressed. Yes. We want them to be happy. Yes, <laughs> and walking, I've had the privilege to walk around your mm -hmm. amazing, incredible, beautiful farm to see firsthand the agriculture here at work. And it's cool to see the cows, the pigs. It's been interesting to see this about how it truly is a family farm here. So pigs are supposed to live out in the woods, in the grass, eating grass, rooting around. So what's the difference between industrial farming and a, a family farm with grass-fed animals? What's well, the difference between all think that? Think about it like going to the grocery store and going to a great big grocery store with hundreds of people in there and think of that as the farm versus going down a dirt road and finding a little farmer's market that's a hidden gem. Mm -hmm. That's really kind of the difference mm -hmm. where industrial farming is lots of animals, get them in, get them out, get them processed, mm -hmm. and um, grass-fed is letting the animals live as close to nature mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. So I've been super interested, of course, with, with buying local. Produce to me is a big deal, buying local, local animals and local produce. But um, the one thing that I was fascinated with was your CSA subscription. Can you explain what CSA is? So <laughs> it's community-supported agriculture. Mm -hmm. It's when the community buys directly from the farmer, and usually it's mm -hmm. a monthly subscription. P most people recognize a vegetable mm -hmm. or a fruit CSA mm -hmm. where they get their vegetables every week. Well, we don't do vegetables, we do meat. So once a month, you can, you can order a monthly subscription and pick it up once a month from us and you get a certain amount of meat in each box and you can choose which types of meat you want. You can choose all beef, all chicken, combination of both, pork, and then there's other add-ons like eggs and things mm -hmm. like that. CSA subscriptions, I found this interesting because the difference of going into a grocery store mm -hmm. and just purchasing the meat versus having to plan and be thoughtful about it. Can you explain a little bit about that, about the benefit of this for busy people? Sure, well, I mean, once a month mm -hmm. you're getting your meat and you know what you have, it's in your freezer, you can plan your meals around that. You mm. can say, okay, mm -hmm. I know every month I'm getting two pounds of ground beef, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get roasts, I'm gonna get steaks, and you can plan around that. Now, the way our CSA works mm -hmm. is um, you get what you get. We mm -hmm. try to mix it up every month so that you get a different different items. Nobody wants a chuck roast every month. So we <laughs> mix I it do. up. I do. You do. <laughs> they are yummy. Mm -hmm. um, we mix it up so you get different things every month. and. That helps to expand your capabilities in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then we yeah. also provide support so that you get a, this cut. You have no idea what yeah. it is. And we give you recipes <gasps> on how to use it. Yes, I we, have love a, it. we have a secret little Facebook group for our CSA I members. love it. I love it. <laughs> so if folks are in Northern Virginia or they're near Shenandoah Valley, mm -hmm. I strongly encourage y'all to do this because I think I saw on your Facebook page you go out to Northern Virginia. We do. Like... We do a delivery at Dulles Town Center mm -hmm. so once a month. And we're looking to expand into Oakton, Springfield, Haymarket. Um, we need about five people at each location, so, uh -huh. which isn't very many. So right. if you are interested, find some neighbors, yep. find some friends, and we'll add a drop mm -hmm. out there too. So 
So I know we have many people in our international audience that um, are not near Northern Virginia. So how would they find a farmer? How would they find their own family farm or grass-fed farm? So do a Google search. Go to localharvest.org. It's a great website that gives you names and information. And you can type in, I want berries and I want them in Halifax. And it will give you everybody who's registered on there. You can find them. And then I know a lot of people are worried about cost and being cost effective with this. Mm -hmm. For me, my big thing was I, I will pay the extra money and scrimp on my budget in other areas mm -hmm. to have grass fed because the health benefits are so much better than like a grain mm -hmm. based diet. But so how, let's talk a little bit about cost from buying for, for grass fed animals. So you are going to pay more than you would at the grocery store, especially if you're used to buying on um, bargains or buying on sale. You're definitely going to pay more because you're supporting a local farmer and his family, and you're not supporting a large corporation where they can do everything in mass and then have that discounted amount off of the food because they can produce the quantity. We produce limited quantities. We do that because we don't want to overuse the soil and the earth and we want the, we don't want to overcrowd the animals. So you are going to pay a little bit more, but we found that our prices are competitive with other grass-fed farmers in the area and um, it is a good product. Once you start eating it, you'll understand that there's a def definite difference in quality and taste and texture. If you're loving this video, make sure you smash that like button and put in the comments below local farmer if you want to see more videos just like this one. So this is why having monthly or weekly meal plans is so important. If you want to sign up for my free keto diet meal plan, it's in the description link below. But I love this because better planning does help the budget and it helps make this support our local farmers, not industrial farming. Um, putting my dollars and putting your dollars towards family farmers makes more family farmers. Like it just makes economic sense of supporting local businesses. So I encourage you to go down to the description link below and go check out the amazing Sky, say it one more time for everybody. <laughs> Skyview Acres. Skyview Acres. And that's my mom brain, guys. You know, that's my mom brain. <laughs> um, I, I, our family is going to start the CSA with Skyview Farm Acres. <laughs> Did Sky I do it right? Skyview Acres. Can you see the blooper reel? Blooper reel, blooper reel. All of the information is down in the description link below. I strongly encourage you to check it out. Even if you don't live near Virginia and this couldn't be your this wouldn't be your local farmer, mm -hmm. I still would love for you to see the process in which this amazing, incredible, heartfelt farm of how they're doing it and humanely doing this too and helping the earth. Like I love that you talked about the soil too. I think that that's just... That's a whole nother that's episode. That's a whole nother episode. <laughs> Put in the comments below local farmer if you want us to do a part two on this. I would love to come back out. Anytime. I would love Anytime. to come back out. If you found this video helpful, make sure you click like, subscribe, and sign up for our free weekly keto meal plan down in the description link below. Bye guys. That was one of the coolest experiences of my life. Like seriously, it was so cool to see exactly where the meat is that I'm eating and the grass fed meat, where it's coming from. Like it's from literally, I know where it's coming from now. Like it's always been questionable, like at Costco or Walmart or whatever at the grocery store, where is it coming from? And I literally just saw the pastures and the food that they're eating and the land that they're coming on and the practices that they use to help humanely raise these animals. To me, was extremely like, I will not not support a local grass-fed farmer moving forward. Like I'm putting the stake flag in the ground with our family moving forward. This is now for grass-fed meat. Like it's non-negotiable for the ketogenic diet for me now. Just having seen now what this involves, um, it's really to me now like I'm super, I'm super glad I came here. I'm super glad I came here. So it's not even 10 a.m. <laughs> I've already, already had like a life-changing epiphany. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. And yes, I did wear my espadrillas on the farm. <laughs> I love it. I love that they're Girl. hollering back. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, wait, so. <laughs>